Hey guys, what's up, Zyflin here, and the Warframe is a complex and deep game with a lot to offer. It can be easy for new players to make mistakes that can set them back or make the game less enjoyable. In this video, I'll be going over 15 of the most common mistakes that beginner Warframe players make, I'll explain what the mistakes are, why they're a mistake, and how you can avoid them. Mistake number one is equipping the wrong elemental combos or wasting mod slots with unnecessary mods. When modding your Warframe or weapons, it's important to use the right elemental elemental combos and mods. For example, if you're fighting against Grenier enemies, you want to use mods that apply corrosive damage to your weapon. Using the wrong elemental combos or mods can make your Warframe or weapons less effective and deal less damage. It's also important to avoid wasting mod slots on unnecessary mods, for example, being mods for the wrong faction. These won't have any effect if the faction on the mod doesn't match the faction that you're playing against. In this example, it's better to use fewer mods and rank up the effective mods than to have as many mods equipped as possible, as some mods are far more beneficial than others. To be a little bit more specific, if we compare Serration to Sawtooth Clip, both of these mods will increase our damage, but the Sawtooth Clip mod will only increase the slash damage portion of our weapon, whereas Serration increases all of the damage types on our weapon. Therefore, it's more worthwhile to invest our endo and credits into ranking up Serration to increase its costs and make it more effective. This would mean Serration would take more capacity when we equip it, and we wouldn't be able to fit Sawtooth Clip on. But because Serration is just a better mod, we would get more of a benefit having a higher rank Serration equipped on its own than if we had a lower rank Serration and Sawtooth Clip on at the same time. Mistake number two, worrying too much about containers and lockers around the map. Early on in Warframe, you may find yourself spending a lot of time looking for containers and lockers to open. While it's true that you can find some useful items in these containers, it's not worth spending too much time on them. Focus on completing missions and killing enemies. You're going to get more resources and items faster by blitzing through as many star chart missions as possible, and anything that matters you'll hopefully come across naturally anyway. Mistake number three, not running over resources and mods to collect them. As you're running through missions, it's important to make sure you're running over resources and mods to pick them up. This may seem obvious, but I've seen many players neglect rare resources that are just laying on the ground. Usually rare resources will have a green glow emitting from them to signify that they're rare. Mods are also important to collect too, and they look like this. You won't have to pay as much attention to running over resources to collect whenever you build yourself a sentinel, which brings us on to our next mistake. Mistake number four, not not crafting items when you're able to. Whenever you have the resources, you should be crafting new items such as weapons, frames, companions, etc. as you're able to. As you play, you're going to accumulate blueprints from many different missions and enemies that will allow you to craft new gear in your foundry. This is a great way to level up your mastery rank, which is your account's rank, and to get even stronger weapons and warframes later on. Don't wait until you have a lot of resources before you start crafting. Just craft as much as you can as often as you can because items that you craft in Warframe take anywhere between 12, 24, and 72 hours to build. Mistake number five, not applying Aura mods and Oricon reactors to frequently use frames or frames that you won't sell. Aura mods and Oricon reactors are very important. Aura mods provide passive bonuses to your Warframe and entire squad, whereas Oricon reactors double your Warframe's mod capacity. You should always apply Aura mods to any frame that you play and Oricon reactors to your frequently used Warframes. If you're not sure which Warframes you'll use frequently, then you can apply them to frames that you don't plan on selling. Mistake number six, not farming new frames and weapons when you're able to. It's important to farm new frames and weapons as soon as you're able to. This will help you to increase your mastery rank and get a variety of Warframes and weapons to choose from. There are a lot of different ways to farm new frames and weapons in the game. You can do missions, bounties, or even trade with other players. The main way that you'll farm new frames as a newer player is by killing the bosses on each planet for their component blueprints, which are the Neuroptics, Chassis, and Systems. Once you've got a blueprint for each of those parts for a specific frame, you go to the market and you purchase the blueprint for that frame, which is going to allow you to put all those parts together once you have them crafted in your foundry. Mistake number 
7, ignoring picking up reactant in Fisher missions. In Fisher missions where you farm prime parts, you need to collect 10 reactant to open the relics that you choose to bring into the mission. These are glowing yellow balls, usually referred to as lemons by a lot of Warframe players. If you ignore picking up reactant, you won't open up the relics and you won't get the prime part rewards at the end of the mission. Once you've got 10, then you can complete the mission and then you can choose a prime part from anyone's relic in the lobby. Mistake number eight, not completing as many star chart missions as possible. Completing star chart missions is important for a few reasons. The first reason is that it will help you to increase your master rank. Second, it's going to unlock new planets and missions. Third, it's going to give you access to new resources and resources in higher quantities. You should always be working on completing as many star chart missions as possible. More importantly, unlocking as many planets as quickly as possible, as more planets means more missions and more missions means more farming options. Mistake number nine, not purchasing weapons and weapon blueprints from the market as you increase your mastery. The game doesn't tell you this, but as you increase your mastery rank, you unlock the ability to purchase new weapons and weapon blueprints from the market. It. It's a good idea to purchase these weapons and blueprints as soon as you can. This will help you to not only have different tools for different jobs, but also increase your master rank even more so you have quicker access to even more powerful weapons. It's good to stay on top of everything you unlock or what's available to you. I'll have linked in the description below a wiki page where you can see what is unlocked at what mastery rank. Mistake number 10, not completing mastery tests as soon as they become available. Mastery tests are what actually level your account from level 0 to level one, for example, you should complete mastery tests as soon as they become available. They become available after you gained enough master XP from leveling new Warframes and weapons. Unfortunately, you can only do one mastery rank test a day, but don't worry, you can keep on leveling frames and weapons as your XP is going to carry over into the next rank, even if you haven't actually got to the rank that's up next. So if you're stuck at master rank one because you need to do the master rank two test, but you keep on leveling your frames and your weapons, Weapons, you're still going to be making progress towards master rank 3 and possibly 4 if you're leveling enough. Mistake number 11, not doing bounties on Cetus, Fortuna and Deimos. Bounties are a great way to earn rewards in Warframe, but you can only do bounties on the open world areas known as Cetus and the Plains of Eidolon, Fortuna and the Ord Vallis, and at Deimos in the Cambian Drift. Bounties in these locations grant you new resources, mods, warframes and weapon parts, and most importantly, standing, which you can reuse to rank up with the factions on these open world planets, who you can then buy even more gear from. The amount of standing that you can earn is capped on a daily basis, so you have to run through enough bounties to max out your standing each day to make steady progress. You can increase the amount of standing that you earn on a daily basis by increasing your mastery rank. Mistake number 12, not joining a clan early enough. Joining a clan early on in Warframe can provide you with a lot of benefits, such as access to clan resources in the form of Warframe and weapon blueprints, a clan dojo, and experienced players who can help you learn the game, not to mention the access to the trading post. It's a good idea to join a clan as soon as possible. Anyone can join my clan by joining my Discord, reading the rules, and then posting your in-game name and platform in the clan recruitment channel. Mistake number 13, not farming corrupted mods as soon as you hit demos. Corrupted mods are a type of mod that can provide powerful bonuses to your Warframe or weapons. They can be found in Deimos missions and they're a valuable addition to any Warframe player's arsenal. It's important to start farming corrupted mods as soon as you hit Deimos so that you can take advantage of their power. To farm corrupted mods, you need to purchase dragon keys from the clan's Oricon lab, then equip them to your gear wheel. The dragon keys will apply negative effects to your frame, but you need them to open a vault where the corrupted mod is hidden. You can run demos missions with other players, that way each of you only needs to run one key each. Then all you have to do is search for the vault, read what key it asks for, then insert that key into the vault, walk in, pick up the corrupted mod, and boom, you've got yourself hopefully a really good mod. Corrupted mods from Warframes have a give and take effect, so for example the mod overextended increases how far your ability reach but decrease how effective they are at dealing damage for example. These mods are extremely important for putting together strong endgame builds. Mistake number 14, spending endo and credits on the wrong mods. Endo and credits are two important resources in Warframe. 
Endo is used to rank up mods and credits are used to both rank up mods and buy items from the market. It's important to spend these resources wisely and to avoid spending them on the wrong mods. You should only spend Endo on mods that you're going to use and that you know are actually effective. Some examples are mods that increase the ability stats of your Warframe, so range, duration, strength and efficiency, or mods that increase the total damage of your weapons like serration, hornet strike and pressure point. You can also level up elemental mods, so mods that add elemental effects to your weapons, so bonuses such as heat, toxin, electric and coal. And finally, mistake number 15, wasting starter platinum on something other than Warframe or weapon slots. The starter platinum that you get when you first start Warframe is a valuable resource. You can only get it back via trading or buying it with real money. It's important to use this platinum wisely and to avoid wasting it on things that you don't need. The best use for starter platinum is to buy Warframe slots and weapon slots. These are the most important things that you can buy with platinum and they're going to help you progress through the game as a free-to-play player as they enable you to carry more frames and weapons so that you've got more options for different mission types. And with all that out of the way, that is it for the top 15 mistakes that beginner players make. Shout out to my girlfriend for actually trying out Warframe, that is who I got most of these mistakes from, so if you avoid it making a mistake, thank her, not me. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.